Hi everybody, Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection and Central Digger Supply. Uh, just coming to you with an update on kind of some of the stuff that we've been doing, stuff we've been getting into. And the topic of this uh, video is going to be plasma cutting. So I, first off, this video is not uh, sponsored by any particular plasma cutting company or CNC company or whatever. I'm just talking about what I'm doing because I think it's kind of cool. Uh, and there's a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm very I'm pleasantly surprised with both of my choices when it comes to these CNC tables. Uh, so I wanted to share with you kind of what what I've been dealing with and going through and, uh, and what we got for new products coming out, which is exciting. So stay tuned. All right. So as you can see, we are kind of in the middle of uh, some plasma cutting right now. The reason that I have to take a break, though, is uh, I'm kind of in a, a constant battle between the duty cycle of the plasma cutter and the thermal overload on my air compressor and that's half inch plate so it's kind of understandable that we're going to just take a break and and let everything kind of cool down a little bit um what we've been working on and i got a few of them that are kind of already done here uh attachment ears for you guys looking to fab up some cool stuff i've been working on cutting out attachment ears um these are for your normal 25 millimeter pins that uh, come on all the one ton minis and stuff like that. Um, these are gonna be offered half inch plate here. Uh, and then it actually comes with a, let me try to find one that's not like 4 million degrees. It comes with a, like a plate that you can, you can put in the middle so it kind of all, you can weld it together there. And we leave a little bit of a gap for a weld bead. Um, you know, a quick note about these, right? They're, they're plasma cut, so they are fairly accurate, but uh, there's going to be a little bit of touch up that you got to do, whether it's clearancing this notch a little bit with a grinder. But if you're if you're building custom mini excavator attachments, I'm going to assume that you you have a grinder and you, you're going to know how to do this stuff. Um, I'm going to bore out all the, the holes to make sure the pins fit and all that good stuff or take a file to them, the ones that were really close. So we're doing that. That's kind of cool stuff. These are going to be offered soon. My wife uh, has very generously offered to ship these while I'm out at sea. So you're going to be able to get these, this priority mail, good stuff. So there's that. Go to the website for that. Oh, let's see. Track motor guards, track drive motor guards. Let me, let me go grab one for you. We'll show you what's going on with those. Okay. Track motor guards. So here's the deal with this. This was, this was kind of the first generation of the track motor guards for the larger motors, your rectangular ones. I think they're like a BM2 or a BM, no, I think it's BM2. Um, this was Gen 1. People liked these, but people said, hey, wouldn't it be nice if maybe I had a tow point when I'm using my machine and I want to bring it on a trailer, something to tie off to. And I said, okay, that's a hell of a good idea. So version 1 became version 2. Version two had a hole here uh, for like a hook of a strap or something like that. And uh, people really loved that. And then they said, hey, wouldn't it be nice if I could run a web of a strap through it and go to the other side and then, you know, just go from like a tie down to a tie down. And I said, that's a really great idea. So then that turned into version three, which is these. Version three has a slot here that you can put a strap through. It still has the same hole for the inch and a half uh, pipe there or square tube, inch and a half, I recommend quarter wall. So that was great. And everybody said, wow, these are awesome. Wouldn't it be nice if we had one for those other style drive motors? So we're talking about the, uh, the round ones. I think they call them BMER style motor. Uh, they found on like the, uh, the MX-12 and the MX-15. Basically it's this, it looks like this is one here. This is actually a track drive motor off a mini skid but it's the same motor uh so people said what about those and i said that's a really great idea so then that was this right here now a quick word about these this is gen one and this one over here is gen two um the problem with these motors is the way that the plate has to sit on the motor it creates a weak spot and i wanted to address that the best I could. So let me show you what I came up with. All right, I'm gonna do my best to explain this, uh, the problem that we came up with here. So I got this just thrown on a pulley just so it stands up. So 
with the other motors, there was a lot of meat kind of around these areas that I was able to uh, design a bracket that had a, it had a, I mean, it's a reasonable amount of steel. It's not just going to fall off, right? But the problem is the holes are so close to this kind of raised lip here that when, when you put the bracket on there, it was very, there wasn't a lot of steel kind of holding that on. It, it just, I don't know, it seemed like that was a, a weak point. And unfortunately, I can't bring, I can't make this any bigger because then the holes won't line up. So what I did for, for kind of the, the version two here, as you can see, I left some, I left some more material on this end. And what I figured is when you bolt this thing on, it fits better one way than it does the other. When you bolt this thing on, that's a good, that's a good amount of steel right there. And so the chance, if you hit it this way, obviously it's not going anywhere. If you tried to pull it this way, the amount of force it's going to take to break off this whole thing. I mean, that's three eighths plate. The amount of force there to peel that open is going to be quite considerable. And I figured that, you know, that was a good, that was a good way to kind of get around that problem of these drive motors being this kind of round body here. So, uh, this goes, this goes on the motor, All right? We're going to, we'll just throw some bolts in there just for now. And, uh, then, it's going to also work. Let me grab this piece of steel here. So you got this bolted on. You take the square tube here. This happens to be quarter wall. And that goes on down through there. And then the other plate is on the other side. And then you are protected from nailing this drive motor on rocks or whatever. And you can put a strap through there to tie the thing down. I don't know. I think it'll work. I'm excited to, to offer these. These are also available on the website. Again, they're, they're all plasma cut out by the, the crossfire table there. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able, uh, be able to get to a video on these CNC plasma cutters that I bought. I have two. I have a crossfire, just a regular crossfire, and then I have an arc droid. Um, both of them are absolutely fantastic. I do not say that lightly. These machines are absolutely incredible. Uh, it, they do take some getting used to, admittedly, but if you're looking to do some really cool stuff that you otherwise would not be able to do, and you've got an extra, you know, 2500 bucks or whatever hanging around, 100% buy one of these things. Um, this one does take some getting used to. It take, you got to learn Fusion 360, which I thought was going to be a way bigger deal than it actually is. Uh, and then the Crossfire, excuse me, the Arc Droid, that one is just badass all over the place. It's a more simple machine, but that thing's a monster. Uh, the capabilities of that thing, I mean, I, I, I hook magnets to the bottom of it and just stuck it on steel plates and chopped up this half-inch steel plate right on the back of my truck because I, I can't lift that. So I just, like, magneted the, the Arc Droid to it and told it, cut a straight line here and here, and it just did it. And then I drag these plates in and I can throw them on there because they're not that heavy uh, when they're cut up in like two by twos. So, yeah, I hope I hope that's exciting that we're going to be bringing these products to you. Uh, thank my wife. If you get something in the next few months, thank the wife. She's the one who's shipping it out. And uh, yeah, I'm going to just I'm going to carry on cutting this stuff. And, and that's that. Thanks for all your support. Please like and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share the videos on the Facebook groups. I really appreciate it. It really helps me continue to do this stuff for you guys to make these minis as good as we possibly can make them.